So, real quick rewind. C- can you kind of elaborate on your near death at the Great Barrier Reef or when you were, were you were snorkeling or scuba diving, excuse me? Or if you'd rather not, we don't have to. No, we can. I'll tell this story. And I've never told this story. I'm, but I'm just like, you know what? Why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, it's, so, a, it's a damn good day to have a good day. So, we, uh, I, uh, we went... The night when we got to Bermuda, me and my buddy were... Um, we wanted to go spear fishing. So lion fishing, particularly like, if you know what lion fish are, they're a very uh, invasive species in the world. They eat everything like they're, they're F those fish. Yeah. They, they suck. They're really screwing thing up, but they're beautiful. I mean, if you've ever seen them, they're just gorgeous, uh, very venomous as well. You can't touch them. It's not a good thing. Um, but there, it's encouraged to, to hunt them and spear fish. So we were trying to find someone to take us spear fishing. So we found somebody and, uh, the next day we had two dives. We did those two dives. It was really freaking cold, dude. I was so in was Bermuda really? in Bermuda at the time. Like I was just, I didn't have a big enough, wet, a thick enough wetsuit. I had like three mil. I should have had possibly a seven. And after those two dives, like it was sick. We got good footage, but we we're like, you know, let's just chill. Like, let's not go back out. So we, we go back out and, uh, um, we get back to our spot and then our friends like, Hey, um, like you know, the hotel. Uh, we were in like an Airbnb. Oh, cool. Okay. And our friends like, "Hey, uh, I wanted to. Uh, I'm I'm waiting at the the beach. Where are you guys at? We're like, oh man, we're just gonna like lay this one out. We're like pretty tired. You know, it was pretty cold today. The water's. He goes, oh wow, that sucks. Well, uh, you know, I had a joint, so I I I don't know. I I don't know why why you guys didn't show up. I was like, this is pretty. This sucks. Like that you guys bailed. And I, then we we're like, all right, all right, all right, we'll go, we'll go. So next thing you know, you know, we smoke, uh, which is just a bad decision going into that, that for that me. That Bermuda blueberry. I can't really handle my, my stuff that well, to be quite frank. I can't either. Uh, I don't smoke a lot, but when I do, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm out of it. So he only had two wetsuits, but one of them was like a half wetsuit. And uh, basically when you go line, when you spear, one person has a boogie board and then with like a plastic container. One person would go down and film to get like sick footage and the other person would spear because he only had one yeah. spear gun. So I was on the top just floating with the spear and like, so anyway, we kill the lionfish, you go up, put it in the box. And I was just fluttering away like, you know, oh, this is so fun. Like we're here, like we're out here in the, like living it, right? Is it nighttime or? During the daytime, okay. it's absolutely beautiful. Like it's okay. gorgeous, like picture perfect, it's amazing. But I only had half a wetsuit on, so I was freaking cold, man. I was so free, like so cold. And baked as hell. Yeah. So you're even more sensitive to it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, at one point, my friend looks at me. He goes, "Yo, man, are you, are you good? Like, you good? Like, you, you don't you don't look so good." I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, dude, I'm good." Because if I left, I knew it would have screwed my friends, and they wouldn't have they would have had to swim all the way in. So I didn't think I was that far from shore, right? Like when you have a boogie board, oh, you were just drifting. You're just kicking and boogie board. So I made this one of the stupidest decisions of my life. I just basically said, hey guys, um, I'm just going to swim back to shore um, because it's like right there and you guys just go on without me. And they're like, oh, okay, cool. Like I'm a good swimmer. I'm an athlete. Like I'm okay. So next thing you know, I start swimming back to shore and I'm like swimming and I'm swimming and all of a sudden I'm like, I'm so tired. Then all of a sudden I have a full fledged panic attack in the middle of the open ocean swimming to shore like a total idiot, dude. Because you were off that space cake. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. And I was just like, <laughs> I didn't have the boogie board and I was freaking out, dude. I was looking down 40 feet under just like, wow, I'm, I might drown right here. Like what an idiot move for the demise of the Len Jones. Like, like this is this how is, it is not a good day. I'm like, they're not even going to know I'm gone for two hours and then maybe even longer. Like I'm going to be long freaking I'm going to have coral growing on my ass. Like people like it's not going to be good. So Davy Jones's locker type barnacles all over your body. Yeah. So, I mean, I eventually, <laughs> I eventually got to the top of a reef and I was able to put my knees down and that like really uh, helped me. But I was like maybe a football field and a half out from shore. Like it was bad. And no one could see you panicking. No one was there, dude. No one was on the beach. It was stupid. It was just a stupid move, stupid, naive, idiot move on my part. It was did so you, scary. Did you collect your breath or like how did you? When I got my legs down, it really made me feel so much better. Like I was still like probably three quarters of a football field out from the shore. But like I had my legs down, which was like, oh, okay. And then I just went like reef hopping. And then eventually I made it. It was like that scene out of Baywatch without like the bay. You know, I just roll in. I'm like, <sighs> I was so happy to find the shore and it was like a traumatic ass experience. Drowning is is petrifying. Like that I think would be the most terrible way to go. Yeah, 
Oof. Yeah, it was just rook, dude. I mean, I was fine, but like I pan- a panic attack in the open ocean is, is a rookie move. Wear a life jacket, you know. I, again, I thought I was only Catch like... Catch any fish? But, or? Yeah, we caught like a ton of lionfish. Oh, it was that's sick. a plus. Yeah. Lionfish is really good. If you put in some egg, some milk, a little bit of... All right, let's do it. What up, what up? My name is Ian, a.k.a. Len Jones. Live from Santa Monica, baby boy. And this is my golden hour. <sighs> Oh God, what's going on? Where am I going? Oh. Dad? Yes, my son. I am Deuce, the Deer God. I'm so confused. Who am I? Who am I? Derek. Your true name is Dercules. Dercules. Wait, what? Yes. You are Dercules, the god of the forest. Season five. Five, five, five. Posted by your favorite podcast host, Big Bochi. You already know the deal, mother. <laughs> What's up? So the double clap signifies the start of an episode because we gotta like sync the audio in the video. But before we begin, two things. First thing, I'm surrounded by a bunch of good guys. True. True. Good people. Second thing, as my guest knows today, we try to create some hashtag value <laughs> for whoever is listening. And so if you by chance get any sort of value, whether you laugh, you cry, you get some dope information, which I feel like our guest today has got a lot of, I hope I can keep up, man. Just share it with a friend. That's all we ask. Also, Let's dress the elephant in the room. Bix, swing on up and say what's up. Hey guys. Jack is manning the live producer table today. And listen, full energy blast mode real quick. We are on our third hat trick episode of the GDP LA tour. We are in a different place than we were for our last episodes, but we're in a sweet like surf shack, sick area, Santa Monica. And I got the ponytail boys in the building. One's got a fresh beard. One doesn't. And not to my right. Oh, (laughs) jeez. Shots fired. Well, I haven't shaved either, man. Jeez. Did you just get that trim today? I do it myself. No way. Straight blade? No, just just a little. Fantastic. I'll I'll show you. It's like a $30 electric razor. It's fantastic. Oh, electric. (laughs) We got to bring that over where from. (laughs) Hey. Across from me is, sorry, I didn't mean to point. That was disrespectful. Is Ian Lenhart, otherwise known as Len Jones at the Party 2 Podcast. What up, party people? How's it going? I'm stoked to be here on this gorgeous Sunday. It's a damn good day to have a damn good day. And Ian, actually, can you just give a quick synopsis of uh, what you are, who you are and what you do? Yeah, for sure. Um, for everyone that's on what up what up hope you guys are having a good day my name is ian lenhart i live in santa monica california uh, i work for a tech startup called trueface we sell facial recognition software um, things like being able to detect weapons in real time recognize age verification things like that um, i've also been in the direct sales industry for you know the last seven years um, as well as my own podcast len jones party of two and uh shameless plug yes sir there it is and just a lot of good things good vibes good action all about you know basically figuring out what makes people so happy and understanding why and just overall a happy human so i think i mean as you you're from e- the eastern part of the country would you say people out here in our in la are generally in a better mood than people in the east coast yeah, I mean, it, the sun's great. Like, everyone's happier in the sun, right? I mean, it's just like you wake up and the sun's hitting you in the face. You're going to probably be happier than, you know, just four or five months of winter straight. Like, I love to ski, but the, the sun, you just can't be. I mean, it's it's good vibes, good people. I mean, when I first moved out to San Diego, I remember I went to, like, a Costco, and I bought a surfboard, and I met three. Is that, is that it right there? That's not it. It's <laughs> okay. a different one. But uh, I met like three people in the parking lot of Costco. And I was like, yo, these, everyone's so friendly here. Dude, I was just saying that to Jack. Every, you can say hi to people here and they'll say hi back. It's good. It's good. It's dope. Yeah. You say that, do that in Boston, they give you funny looks. No, they, some people just won't say what's up back. But here, everyone says hi back. Seems like everyone's in a better mood. I mean, that's pretty inevitable because the weather's better. 
But do you think more people strive to have like a positive mindset kind of like you here? Um, I don't know. I mean, it's just everywhere you go, like Boston, there's amazing people. I love Boston. I mean, New York, there's amazing people. There's, there's cool people everywhere. I just think that a certain type of person comes here, you know, just people that, you know, love the beach, love those vibes. I find that the closer you are to the water, the more friendly people are. Uh, just like everywhere you go, there's going to be good and bad people. You know, like one, like a lot of times people say people in LA are fake, right? You hear that a lot. But I just think that's ridiculous because you just clearly don't hang out with good people. There's just maybe like there's a neighborhood or two like that, but like seems like people are pretty been down pretty earth, yeah. Yeah. Now there's a big community of people that love the earth, all organic, all that stuff. Basically, you know the whole avocado trend started in California. No way. They grow avocados here. That yeah, Mexico. There's like a really big deal about the avocados right now because it's like avocados are like gold because they're in such high demand that people are legitimately starving in these other. I mean, um, uh, they just, there's just no water because they're using it all for growing these avocados. It's a really what fascinating documentary that you can watch on Netflix. No yeah. way. The avocado gold rush. Whoa. Yeah. So w- when I say like positive mindset, I mean like I feel like from what I've seen in your content for the most part, like you're just kind of always striving to be like. A more positive dude like how do we bet like how do we better ourselves there's not a whole lot of that in the east coast from like my perspective have you noticed there are like-minded people like you out here more so than back in albany i do i think that a lot of people that come here come to this area because they're trying to make it they're trying to surround themselves i mean la this area of california in general has the largest hub of you know quote unquote influencers or people that are, you know, either starting their own YouTube channel or starting a business. A lot of people in San Francisco are now moving from San Francisco, moving their startups to Santa Monica. So now they call it Silicon Beach because it's like way warmer, way nicer. Um, This is a really good atmosphere. And, And like you said, yeah, I'm all about being happy and positive, but like I don't want to get it twisted. Like, it's not like I'm always happy. I'm not always jazzed up and I'm not always stoked. You know, I've gone through a lot of health challenges this past two years. Uh, it's been an up and down, but every single time when you just kind of tell yourself like, yeah, it's a damn good day to have a damn good day. Like life's short, you know, enjoy the people you're with, enjoy the homies, enjoy every second you can try to connect with as many good people as you can embrace, just change, try new things, do fun shit, you know, just like live life to the fullest. And I, I try to put a face on that makes me realize how I should be. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so is it an effort for you at this point, or is it systematic in your brain? Like, okay. it's, it's systematic. That's yeah. a great question. Yeah, it's. I mean, I wake up and I just get stoked on little things. Like, I could look at like the, like you saw su- you saw Jack's beard and you're like, yeah, let's fucking go. Yeah, Mine's yeah. way straighter. I mean, not at all. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Jack he, he, Bix is clearly a gangster. It clearly runs it. You guys are vibing. I love it. But it's just like little things in life that you should be excited about. Like, you know, for me, like I could look at a succulent, like a, like a plant, and be like, yo, that shit. Amazing. Who brought those in the roomie or you? My roommate, yeah. But uh, my playing game's getting better. But just looking at anything that gets you excited, like, I don't know, you, you eat like a delicious fruit. You're like, wow, this fruit's fantastic. Dude, there's got to be more people like you out here, You man. know, like just the little things. Because I had an apple yesterday. I was like, yo, it's just soggy as hell, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> or just meeting somebody and having a good experience and just realizing someone's kind and cool and nice. Like, that stuff just recharges your battery, makes you realize like, you know, Hakuna Matata kind of type deal. Like everyone's, people are, people are inherently good in my opinion. I concur. Was this passed down through your parents, this type of like positivity mindset or have you just acquired it over time? My dad's definitely a homie. Like he's one of the funniest, awesome people ever. So I got to give a, give a plug to the Papa, shout, shout out to pops, Papa Jones. Um, but yeah, I mean, he was, he was huge. He's just a really good person. So I, I would say a little bit of it's passed down, but I mean, you, you don't, you're not born kind of with positivity. I mean, it's just like, you know, you just, what makes you happy? What gets you excited? Like what makes you feel alive? Like you guys coming out here, touring all over, meeting amazing people. You guys are probably feeling so good. I'm and, feeling great. And that feeling is so like just chasing that feeling is like that euphoria of being in the present, which I think is great about this podcast world is when you're on the mic and you're talking, you're in the present. Like we're, we're, I'm just focused on you guys. The phone's on airplane mode. We're not, you know, surrounded should, in the. I should probably do that as well. The craziness of social media and just like dogging down our brains with just all sorts of shit. Like, 
I mean, I, I've been too much on my phone, like, to be straight up. Like, I've been trying to... Do you feel over-consumed sometimes? 100%, yeah. Me too. Because I love it. Like, just, I love the, the Instagram stories. I think they're hilarious. You know, I just... I make them mostly because I think they're funny, you know, for me. But, you know, before you know it, you're just... You go down that rabbit hole and you're not being productive. So, like, I hate when... I don't know if you've ever realized you're just on a, on a little loop. You open your phone and you just check, like, seven to ten apps that you probably just checked within the last ten minutes. And it's just like you realize you're on autopilot. What are you, LinkedIn, Twitter, Trueface? I mean, I don't, I, mess, Facebook is a lot. Messenger, yeah. mail, messages, WhatsApp, Instagram, Fleep. You know, what, all is, what is Fleep? Fleep's like Slack. It's like a different form of Slack. I like it a lot more. Okay, fill me in on Slack. Bro. Slack is like a messenger channel. So you can have, you say, your, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, you can have your whole company all have a Slack channel. It's typically how most companies keep in touch with everything. So you could have different rooms, like the sales room, the finance room, uh, the general room. It's basically your master portal to your company. More effective than just like a, a messages or? Yeah, it just keeps it all in one space and you can do more things. Like you can attach, say, a PDF and send it. Or you oh, can. Oh, word, okay. Yeah, there's a lot more you can do with it. So it's just a really good channel. And what is the benefit to Fleep over Slack? I just think, I mean, personally, Fleep is just kind of, I like the interface more. Everybody has Slack too. So, like, I mean, I have Slack too, but Fleep just is a nice channel. It's just Gotta the get UI is great. GDP, huh? Yeah, so what's the deal with GDP? Where did that come from? It's got a great ring to it. You want me to give you the salesman version or the real version? <laughs> I guess the real version. Okay, you asked for it. <laughs> well, so when Jack and I, so I started making YouTube videos in college under the pseudonym Coach Connie, the alias. And they were like comedy sketches, like three to four minutes. It's back when YouTube videos were like not all information and people were like putting up like little films and stuff, right? Mm. And so Jack and I, we had finished a semester at PC. We were thinking of a logo to use. We're like, because YouTubers have end cards, right? And so my freshman year dorm was called The Barn. And everyone had their own flamboyant, well, everyone had their own animal. I was the flamboyant pony who was always doing kind of like ridic ridiculous shit. Yeah. I was walking around naked a lot in my dorm. So people call me The Pony. And I grew up in Lincoln, Mass on Deer Haven Road. And so we were choosing between a pony and a deer. And, J and Jack and I were thinking about it for like three weeks. We're like, yo, dude, like, what do we do? And so I was coming back from just back home at like four in the morning. And I'm on the highway, right? Smack! Obliterated a deer. And I just kept driving. And there was a moment, like the real talk, people say you have like this adrenaline rush, you know what I'm saying? Like when something really bad's about to happen, there was like actually a moment where I was, it wasn't like necessarily bird's eye, but I was like bird's eye and a little to the side and I could see my car hit the deer. And so I just kept driving and I was like, oh, what the fuck, dude? what the fuck, what the fuck? And I kept driving. And That's I, sketchy. Scary, dude. <laughs> and I kept driving, pulled over into my house. I was like stunned. Because I had like a second where I could pull the wheel. Stopped, went inside, went to bed. Woke up, being like, yeah, that just happened. And there was, to be honest with you, there was like blood all over my car. And so we thought it was a sign. You asked for the, the real version, man. <laughs> Golden Deer Productions, there it is. Now we're here. That is a memoir. It's pretty ridiculous, honestly. Have you ever had any near death like that? I had like one near death, yeah, in Bermuda. What happened? We uh, we were scuba diving, and uh, I love scuba diving. It's like one of my favorite hobbies in the world. That's how you got the the uh, fish fixation. No, I <laughs> the fixation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, I just I love the fish, bro. It's so good. Yeah. So slimy. Um, I won a fish at a at a con like one of those fairs. I was like a young fourteen year old. Whoa. Or like thirteen, I don't know. And then that led to a 10-gallon tank, and 10 gallon to a 28-gallon. What's, 20, it, what's this one? That's a 55. And then 50 to 46. Next thing you know, I got into salt water. And salt water is so much cooler than fresh water. But it's like 10 times more expensive. The, the fish are more like colorful, right? Yeah, just part. beautiful, like more colorful. I mean, nothing in the world is more beautiful than a living, healthy coral reef. Which Are is, there any left? Well, 80% of the Great Barrier Reef is dead, which know, is crazy. And that's the largest reef in the world. So, I mean, I don't know the exact number of overall coral bleaching, but 
in the next 30 years, we could lose up to 90% of all coral reefs in the world, which is just crazy. Dude, and some scary. of those before and after the, of the, is the great barrier reef you yeah. said, yeah, mm-hmm. are ridiculous. Yeah. And there's, uh, that's, you know, our biggest challenge as entrepreneurs. I mean, I had, um, Daniela Fernandez on the show and she's somebody that she's become a really good friend, but also just someone I truly look up to, you know, she's 25 years old, started this thing called the SO Alliance, sustainable ocean Alliance. And it has over like a hundred chapters of college students all across the world fighting climate change. And then she also started the Ocean Solutions Accelerator. That's, that's what you're telling us, yeah. Yeah, and then she, I got funded by the founder of Salesforce, and she invests in just companies that are helping the environment by building products that are saving the environment. So it's like I love meeting people that are actually doing applicable change. We also just had Ibrahim Al Husseini on the podcast. He's the slayed um, it, slay the accent, loved it. Yeah, <laughs> he's the uh, <laughs> co- founder of Full Cycle. Full Cycle is one of the largest uh, leaders in climate change investing in general, because that's how we're going to change stuff, right? Putting money into companies that are feeding that, you know, unit economics, get down to the business and you're able to change the infrastructure of the world down to the TVs we buy, down to the cars we drive, to the roads, to everything. The infrastructure is so outdated in the world. Like there's so much new technology that we're not currently using. And it's crazy when you find out how many things are using technology from 30 years ago. And we just haven't updated it with all the crazy stuff that we can do today. So can you give me an example of something that's outdated? Um, I mean, I'm trying to think like some quick examples. It's just like everything from just the energy efficiency of building, you know, walls to cutting down trees to uh, just any aspect of the world like the supply chain where all the raw materials are built uh, the way we even process gas the way we process oil could be done 10 times more efficiently to reduce carbon dioxide how long will would it take to implement a change like these effectively though 50 i mean a lot a lot of time. time yeah a long long time i mean obviously you know there's a lot that people can do they can change legislation they can go out and just be be the force of change. I think that's the biggest way in general. I mean, this is a tangent, but I mean, everyone wants to protect the world. Everyone wants to save the environment. Like if you don't, you're like a true douchebag. Like you're like <laughs> really like a terrible person. I'm sorry, but, um, but we don't know how to do it, right? We know we should recycle, but a lot of us think that just by throwing something in a bin is recyclable. I thought that too, but then I had Plastic Free Mermaid on the show, Kate Nelson, shout out. And she lives a completely plastic-free lifestyle in every way, shape, or form, which is crazy um, because she's doing it and it inspires you to do it. And then like it goes into you know, the trash problem. The trash problem in the world is so crazy. Just think about how much trash you create every single day and then multiply that by everyone in your Sick. building and then multiply that by everyone on your street. And then also, it's something like 80 million pounds of trash are produced every day or something like that. It's a crazy amount of nu- like number and we're just storing it and pushing it and we don't have solutions to these things. So there's opportunity everywhere to change something, everywhere you look. Have you always been eco-conscious or is it since you started the podcast where you've really started to put your foot down like, okay, I got to make some changes in my habits? I mean, I'm just trying to, I mean, I'm not going to put, I'm not going to act like I'm some sort of fearless leader of, of climate change. You know, Daniela Fernandez, Kate Nelson, Ibrahim, those guys they're freaking making moves. So they've rubbed they rubbed off on you a little bit. 100%, man. Yeah. I mean, it's just like we're our issues are so big right now. Like the, the world's about to go like it's crazy what's happening. We live in the sweetest time where technology is amazing. We can do things we've never been able to do before. The tech the medical advances are insane. Uh, we have we can look into things like never before. I, I recently saw the docu series Our Planet on Netflix. Unbelievable! It puts Planet Earth to shame. No when, way! Planet Earth is a goat. Planet Earth is goat, but it's it's amazing. The shots they had, like the, the cinematography, is ridiculous. When we like camera traps now are catching the most unbelievable thing. I mean, I like personally like there's. I get fired. There's this girl named Lisa Tora Jacklin. She was on the podcast. She is a great example of somebody that is living a crazy life, but doing good for the world, but doing things differently. Most of us, we graduate school, we go get a job. If you're from the East Coast, you move to Boston, you know, that's or New York. Yeah, New York, Boston. And then you grind it out. And then eventually all your friends are getting married. So then you get a girlfriend and you think you need to settle down. And then you have kids, you get the house. And then you're just, buh, 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 slow buh, buh, down, buh. dude. Before you know it, you're 50. And it's like, 
it's just like we're stuck in this loop. But then when I meet people that are just changing that up, it inspires me so much. Lisa Tora Jacqueline, she uh, like 20 years old for a, a school project. She went to South Africa for like cheetah conservation for like a week. Oh, yeah. I watched this one. And she decided to move there permanently. Now, permanently rehabilitates cheetahs on a daily basis. Every day she is living with teaching these things how to hunt, um, spreading awareness for She must change. love chaos, man. I mean, dude, it's just like when you see people like that, you're like, oh, my God. Like, what? Like, you could do that. And that's the other thing that I get excited about with talking to anyone. Like, any of us could do that. Any of us could just go and book a plane ticket and move to South Africa and raise cheetahs if you wanted to. Nothing stopping you. Like Joey Coleman, he sold, he bought a sail ship in the bay, like a sailboat, a sail ship. Yeah. He bought a sailboat that was like a 50 foot sailboat for like super cheap, something like 30 grand. It was like beaten up. It's been sitting there for 30 years, like a long time. And he fixed it up over six to seven months, had like a, you know, a, a NASA uh, engineer help him build it. And then him and his three crewmates and his girlfriend sailed it from San Francisco to Nicaragua through a, like a level one hurricane, all sorts of How crazy How long did shit. that take? I, I think it took something like 35 days or something like that, possibly 45 days. I have to double check. But what, then they what start- What was like the mission? Like The mission was- try it? The, the whole mission was to start a business in Nicaragua. They went on their honeymoon in, honeymoon in Nicaragua and they realized like there's so much opportunity out here. It's beautiful. So they just sail out there and then they start doing these tours. That's how I met Joey Coleman. I went to Nicaragua- through this incentive trip I won. We went on his boat, became homies. And this dude was just like the most amazing life ever. Like sailing in the most tropical, beautiful weather with his wife, all these super cool people. He had crazy celebrities on the boat. Like just awesome, living his dream. You know what's wicked interesting to me as as you're talking about all these people is like you work in a... Like you work in business, you work in marketing, but you still have this like total freedom to like your lifestyle, which is something like I've never seen before. It's like really dope, dude. I mean, I'm lucky. Uh, Are a lot of people like that in your office too or? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, I definitely work our business. I just think that the, the philosophy that you have to be in the office to get work done is just outdated. Uh, I think that if you can get your shit done, you can work anywhere in the world. So for example, when we got into the 500 Startups Accelerator program in San Francisco, I moved to San Francisco and did that for a little while, but realized, number one, I was spending so much money to get so little. I didn't really like San Francisco, to be totally frank. It just, the, the Too w- cold. weather blows, like, I don't know. I just think the people, like, aren't that friendly compared to other places, like, it's overall. Compared to Santa Monica. I compared to the warmer weather. Yeah. I think just weather has a big deal with it. It does. Um, vit- that vitamin D and that vitamin See, <laughs> in, a, in a little bit of B, a little bit of B. But I, uh, I, had a, I had a good buddy that after college, he chased a girl to Columbia, Medellin. And uh, oh God, what happened? He actually ended, they ended up breaking up as soon as he got to Columbia. And they cut his head off? No, no, no. no. <laughs> he, he ended up just living the dream out there. He was always sending me the craziest snaps. So I said, you know, why not I move to Medellin and work remotely? And, you know, the dudes I work with were like, hell yeah. So I moved to Columbia for four to five, six, almost, almost six months. And you're a madman, dude. And lived in dude, not even it's a hidden gem. Yeah, dude. I was on like the 16th floor penthouse for $400 a month in rent. (laughs) Say less, bro. (laughs) Like (laughs) sounds dope. It's insane. The value you can get. Do they, do they have a, generally do people out there have a good perception of Americans or yeah, I mean, you you should know Spanish. My Spanish is super weak. So, like, I mean, I I was, I'm still learning to this day. I'm trying to. Yeah. But, uh, you speak around here a little bit. Yeah, no, it's definitely a good perception for sure. I mean, you just got to, the, the place I was in, El Poblado, is, is very touristy in that sense. So, like, it's kind of not Americanized, but there's so much travelers or what they call digital nomads that work remotely and visit that area. So, there's a different type of ish culture but yeah everyone's really chill i love colombia like colombia i never felt not safe i never felt like i was you know in harm's way but i'm also relatively smart like i try not to put myself in really effed up situations so real quick rewind can you kind of elaborate on your near death at the great barrier reef or when you were were you're snorkeling or scuba diving excuse me 
Or if you'd rather not, we don't have to. No, we can. I'll tell this story. And I've never told this story. I'm, but I'm just like, you know what? Why not? Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, it's, so, a, it's a damn good day to have a good day. So we, uh, I, uh, we went the night when we got to Bermuda, me and my buddy were, um, we wanted to go spear fishing. So lion fishing, particularly like if you know what lion fish are, they're a very uh, invasive species in the world. They eat everything like they're, they're F those fish. Yeah, they, they suck. They're really screwing things up, but they're beautiful. I mean, if you've ever seen them, they're just gorgeous. Uh, very venomous as well. You can't touch them. It's not a good thing. Um, but they're, it's encouraged to, to hunt them and spearfish. So we were trying to find someone to take us spearfishing. So we found somebody, and uh, the next day we had two dives. We did those two dives. It was really freaking cold, dude. I was so... It was Bermuda? Really? In Bermuda at the time. Like I was just... I didn't have a big enough, wet, a thick enough wetsuit. I had like three mil. I should have had possibly a seven. And after those two dives, like it was sick. We got good footage, but we're like, you know, let's just chill. Like, let's not go back out. So we, we go back out and, uh, um, we get back to our spot and then our friends like, Hey, um, like you know, the hotel, uh, we were in like an Airbnb Oh, cool. Okay. and our friends like, Hey, uh, I wanted to, uh, I'm, I'm waiting at the, the beach. Where are you guys at? We're like, Oh man, we're just going to like lay this one out. We're like pretty tired. You know, it was pretty cold today. The water's, he goes, Oh wow, that sucks. Well, uh, you know, I had a joint, so I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why, why you guys didn't show up. I was like, this is pretty, this sucks like, that you guys bailed. And I, then we we're like, all right, all right, all right, we'll go, we'll go. So next thing you know, you know, we smoke, uh, which is just a bad decision going into that, that for that me. That Bermuda blueberry. I can't really handle my, my stuff that well, to be quite frank. I can't either. Uh, I don't smoke a lot, but when I do, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm out of it. So he only had two wetsuits, but one of them was like a half wetsuit. And, uh, basically when you go line, when you spear, one person has a boogie board and then with like a plastic container, one person would go down and film to get like sick footage and the other person would spear cause he only had one yeah. spear gun. So I was on the top just floating with the spear and like, so anyway, we kill the lion fish, you go up, put it in the box and I was just fluttering away. Like, you know, Oh, this is so fun. Like we're here, like we're out here in the, like living it. Right. Is it nighttime or? During the daytime, okay. it's absolutely beautiful. Like, it's okay. gorgeous. Like, picture perfect. It's amazing. But I only had half a wetsuit on, so I was freaking cold, man. I was so free, like, so cold. And baked as hell. Yeah. So you're even more sensitive to it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, at one point, my friend looks at me. He goes, yo, man, are you, are you good? Like, you good? Like, you, you don't you don't look so good. I'm like, yeah, yeah, dude, I'm good. Because if I left, I knew it would have screwed my friends, and they wouldn't have, they would have had to swim all the way in. So, I didn't think I was that far from shore, right? Like when you have a boogie board, oh, you were just drifting. You're just kicking and boogie board. So I made this one of the stupidest decisions of my life. I just basically said, "Hey guys, um, I'm just gonna swim back to shore, um, because it's like right there, and you guys just go on without me." And they're like, "Oh, okay, cool. Like I'm a good swimmer. I'm an athlete. Like I'm okay." So next thing you know, I start swimming back to shore, and I'm like swimming, and I'm swimming, and all of a sudden I'm like. I'm so tired. Then all of a sudden, I have a full-fledged panic attack in the middle of the open ocean, swimming to shore like a total idiot, dude. Because you were off that space cake. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, and I was just like, <laughs> I didn't have the boogie board, and I was freaking out, dude. I was looking down 40 feet under just like, wow, I'm, I might drown right here. Like, what an idiot move for the demise of the Len Jones. Like... <laughs> Like this is this how is, it is not a good day. I'm like, they're not even going to know I'm gone for two hours and then maybe even longer. Like I'm going to be long freaking, I'm going to have coral growing on my ass. Like people like it's not going to be good. So Davy Jones's locker type barnacles all over your body. Yeah. So, I mean, I eventually, <laughs> I eventually got to the top of a reef and I was able to put my knees down and that like really uh, helped me. But I was like maybe a football field and a half out from shore. Like it was bad. And no one could see you panicking. No one was there, dude. No one was on the beach. It was stupid. It was just a stupid move, stupid, naive, idiot move on my part. It was did so you, scary. Did you collect your breath or like how did you? When I got my legs down, it really made me feel so much better. Like I was still like probably three quarters of a football field out from the shore. But like I had my legs down, which was like, oh, okay. And then I just went like reef hopping. And then eventually I made it. It was like that scene out of Baywatch without like the bay. You know, I just roll in. I'm like, <sighs> I was so happy to find the shore and it was like a traumatic ass experience. Drowning is is petrifying. Like that I think would be the most terrible way to go. Yeah, Oof. Yeah, it was just rook, dude. I mean, I was fine, but like I pan panic attack in the open ocean is is a rookie move. Wear a life jacket, you know, 
I, again, I thought I was only catching like, any fish. But, or? Yeah, we caught like a ton of lionfish. Oh, it was that's sick. A plus. Yeah, lionfish is really good. If you put in some egg, some milk, a little bit of flour action. This is actually a great segue. So, first off, that was an insane story. Honestly, yeah, I was totally just, captivated. Yeah, it was, it's great. Jack's got a couple near death. We'll have to put that in your memoir. Yeah, <laughs> actually, probably at least two hands. Um, but in some of your content, you discuss cybo, and so we're kind of at least myself. I'm kind of like crazy anal about my diet recently. Can you explain what cybo is and like just a brief synopsis of your experience with it? Yeah. So SIBO is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth. It's a relatively new type of um, sickness, if you would, that they're, they're learning about. The Cedar sinai Institute in, in LA actually is the most up-to-date on this subject. Dr. Mark Pimental wrote a book called An IBS Solution. So IBS I, is Irritable Bowel Syndrome. Which correct. Which means like your stomach's always yeah so I mean, there's like this crazy stat that one in five people in the world have ibs and a lot of that could be due to the you know the american diet is terrible it's awful for you refined carbs are terrible there's a lot of stuff yes, we sir. know that's terrible but it's delicious and it's part of our world so you get ibs right and ibs is like easy to some for some it's pretty easy to manage but based on these studies by the cedar sinai institute it was something like 40 to 60 percent of people with severe ibs actually have SIBO. So SIBO is when you, by literature, you get too much uh, bacteria inside of your small intestine and then it proliferates there and your body can't get rid of it. And you've had, you had a terrible experience with it, right? Yeah. I mean, I dropped $13,000 trying to figure this stuff out. I mean, like it's, it was funny for a while, right? Like I'm a guy like farting, right? It's a funny thing. Like, ha ah, yeah. <laughs> But it was only funny for so long. It got to the point when <laughs> it got for like nine to 10 months. Like i never like health never really felt terrible. But like I would just you could smell me from a mile away no matter what I ate, no matter how much I ran, no matter anything. And I couldn't figure out what it was. I tried every pill. I tried every short term solution. Nothing freaking worked. Did it you was, clean up your diet? Didn't change anything? I did everything. No, I was eating the kale, the ginger, you know. Bland diet. I was taking away all the, the low food map diet. I did that for a while. Um, I, I did the, the SCD, the specific carbohydrate diet for a while. So you were testing a bunch of stuff. And when did, did you realize it was SIBO? Well, I had a SIBO test once and it was negative. So that put me in a bad space. It's a three hour lactulose breath test. I did it where you have to make sure you get tested for both methane and hydrogen. So when your body produces um, methane and hydrogen over something like eight PPMs, that's, a, that's the gold standard that you have SIBO. So eventually I got retested for SIBO after I'd gotten a colonoscopy and endoscopy. Oh, geez. Oh yeah, I got, I got I got done up. Yeah. Yeah. Never going. <laughs> um, I got every test. I almost was about to get a chest X-ray. I, uh, had two, what are those called? Ultrasounds on my liver. Dude, this isn't funny at all. They, found, my, they found like gallbladder polyps and stuff like, uh, so gallbladder stone. So I was at one point went to a surgeon to, about to get my gallbladder out, which is a relatively normal procedure. Um, but that was something, I mean, I tried everything and then eventually I took another test and they found out it was SIBO. Okay. And so what, what were your symptoms? Like you were just farting a lot and like your stomach was just always turbulent. Yeah. So I I got to a point where like, I call it D day where like, I just felt like my whole shit went down and it triggered a lot of really bad health things for me. Um, I had recently just an FYI, I'd recently gotten LASIK eye surgery, uh, which is very safe procedure. It's very like relatively, you know, 99.99% 99.99% success rate. Uh, I didn't know I was about to be the 0.01%. Absolute nightmare situation. Uh, but basically, my body was in such chronic inflammation that everything just dropped. My healing of my eyes actually went back in reverse, and my corneal nerves never healed. And I was having insane lights, LED, um, insane uh, glare from the sun. Like, lights were so bright. My stomach was on an all-time new, migraines off the ass. I couldn't go to work. I couldn't do anything. I was in my room. I've never been. How, to, how long ago is this? Like eight months ago. Oh, where is yeah, this is now. I never been depressed in my life. Like I've never been clinically seriously depressed. Like I'm a happy person and I was losing my shit. Like from my body was just dying. My, so 
eventually I ended up figuring it all out. Like a lot of the other side effects I had, um, all the research on your own. Yeah. Another side effect is like, uh, you know, constipation, gas, bloating, like stomach aches. You were just a mess. Hashimoto's disease, which is where your thyroid starts acting up. So a lot of these autoimmune issues are actually, there's always something called a root cause and like figuring out what the root cause is. So your body can spiral into so much shitty things when your stomach's fucked, right? If your stomach's fucked, that's literally what everything goes through. Like your gut is... Your microbiome, the yeah. health. You know, you hear things like leaky gut and you hear things like... Um, there's a lot of different ways that, you know, people want to heal their gut. So eventually I finally got tested for SIBO and then there's a couple of different things. You can get a simple pill called Rifaximine. Rifaximine in clinical studies is 40% effective. It helps a lot of people. 40% of the time they won't have a reoccurrence of SIBO. Uh, and then there's something more intense called an elemental diet. And I am a huge proponent of the elemental diet. If you guys want to learn about SIBO, I did a whole YouTube series on this. So like everything I've learned, everything I went through and what worked, the elemental diet is a pre-digested formula that was originally created for astronauts. So what do you eat? It's kind of like a protein shake of sorts, uh, but it's like got all just the basic things you need to essentially survive. And you just drink this shake for two weeks every day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Uh, and, uh, I did that and I started weaning on. And for the first time in my life, I was just having normal bowel movements, you know, pooping normally, which, you know, it's, again, it's a funny conversation, but first, it was first time in your life. I mean, first time since I, oh, okay. Shit got real. You know, I didn't know if this is no happening whole intended. life. I was like, how would this to be positive? No, dude, 25 years. I was a beast, dude. Just no health problems. Like karma just caught up. Right. It's just, I had no issues. I never broke a bone in my body. But. Cause all that lionfish, bro. <laughs> but yeah dude cyber is no joke the <laughs> elemental diet is a big deal like if you're having stomach issues i highly recommend doing it the physician's elemental diet by integrative therapeutics i don't get paid by them uh it's expensive but it's it works tastes great in my opinion and it's gonna heal you for a little hashtag value because we probably caught up as a clip can you just explain what the elemental diet is and how to structure your meal plan kind of like yeah so smoothie I mean, plan. the elemental diet is basically like i'm saying it a little bit wrong but it's a pre-digested formula of all your macronutrients that you need to survive so it's basically the food's already digest in a digestible format that your body can just consume so like a powder so if liquid. you think of your intestines your intestines are 20 feet or so long so what happens with this formula is it gets absorbed in the first two feet of the intestines and what that does is you never feel like you're super hungry or you're fasting. You feel full, you feel satiated, but the next 18 feet or so of your intestines just get a break, like a complete break. And then it allows your body's natural ability to digest like your MMC, your migratory motor complex to push and move and then kill all that. And you stop feeding the bacteria that has built up in your small intestine. And over those two weeks, you know, you'll kind of, you know, expunge, poop all that stuff out, get those toxins out. And you basically just clear the pipes per se. What? So what does one of those smoothies look like? Like what's in it? It's literally like just like four cups. Uh, cups. So each cup, cup. Each cup is 150 calories. So if you're, you know, 170 pound man, you're going to probably need 2,400 calories or something along every day to maintain your body weight. So you just add like a half a cup of water per cup, blend it up, boom, done. Clear that system. Yeah, clear flush the it out. Clear the Super Mario pipe. Say, so can you check the camera to make sure it's straight? Good. Yeah. So that's, it's a, gut health is huge. I mean, I've learned, I've been humbled a lot by it. I mean, it affects everything. If you have inflammation in your body, it's bad, dude. A lot of bad things can happen. One thing I'm learning since we've been out here is <clears throat> people are way more health conscious like people understand their bodies way better out here. Is that through education? Like how do, how are people acquiring this type of information? I don't know. I mean, I don't, I wouldn't, I don't know if that's like a fact I can say is real. I mean, maybe that's like something you've noticed, uh, because I mean, there's, well, maybe it's just cause there's like, we're learning about more diet trends and like, yeah. like I've learned like tons of new diet stuff and, new stuff to try some of the restaurants are offering well like, you had sky cohen's on the podcast she's uh, fantastic yeah, shout she was, out she was a monster she killed it she's amazing yeah and she has navigates on her channel um sky life she navigates all mm -hmm. the different health trends and and what works and what doesn't uh, she, work she's on a what was it called the clean 30 diet Whole, Whole 30. 
Whole thirty, yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's tried cool. it all. I mean, she's she's really cool. She's got a great channel. But there's a lot of different things, man. There's a, some things work for some people. But I mean, here's like a good thing. I mean, you guys are 23. I'm 27. You know, yesterday I was 23. Like it's like, well, um, but I feel like I'm 21. You know, at heart, like I don't, you, I don't you look feel like any, 18, I, I don't bro. feel any older. You know, like, um, but like alcohol like i used to party my face off in college you know it was so fun to go out with the boys and slam a 30 rack and like have a great time like you know drinking became so routine to me and it was great but i hit a point where i realized like just in the last year and a half or two that drinking legitimately feels like i'm just poisoning my body every single time i do it bro that's what jack and i were talking about like dude boozing just kills you man dude it sucks and it like hung, it like, puts you back two days you know oh yeah so i mean with that said i still drink i'm not perfect right <laughs> come on ian uh, but <laughs> i have fun you know but i definitely like have slim it down big time because like i just can't my body does not especially if you have like weak stomach stuff like me like you got to be really health conscious okay i, got I do, this, do the celery juice in the morning oh the sky's big on the celery juice yeah Hey, Bix, any questions right now? Uh, I got a couple, but I'll save them for later. No, just give, give us one. Well, speaking of the celery juice real quick, if you guys want to listen to Anthony Williams, he wrote a bunch of books called Liver Rescue, which is a pretty sweet uh, book just about like things you can do to cleanse your liver. And there's a lot of really, really good recipes that just kind of give you. And one thing that I've learned from them is that there's things called intermittent fasting, right? You don't eat till 12. But one thing you can do is limit your fats until after 12 o'clock. So like that's avocados or anything in the morning. And that has helped me significantly. Just not eating fats in the morning, only between 12 and 8. Um, that has changed everything. You can have fruit in the morning, whatever, but just limit your fats. It helps a lot. Yeah, me, me and Connor are big advocates for fasting. We do it every day. Hell yeah. I, I'm kind of a lunatic. I do like a 21-hour fast every day. But, but uh, my, my question for you was, so you said you're, you've always been kind of a positive guy, but... When you um when you were going through this health stuff, you kind of went down a, a a dark path or not a dark path, but slight depression. What was like the main main goal of getting out of that by fixing your health stuff? Like what? As soon as you fixed your health stuff, you were good. Yeah, straight up. I mean, I think it's something like ninety percent of serotonin is produced in your gut. Okay. So serotonin is you know the chemical that initiates feelings of happiness and stuff like that. Um, you got a lot of it. <laughs> You're pumping with a baby boy. <laughs> we, we out here. You know, Let's we're, go. We're sailing the ship. It's a damn know? good day. So yeah, I literally, when I cleaned my gut, my happiness just arose like crazy. So like a lot of these people that are on antidepressants, a lot of them- Don't are, get me started on those things. They definitely don't need, like at least, I don't know, I'm not a doctor, so I can't make health claims, but 90% of them definitely don't need them. They just need to heal their guts for the most part. They need to stop eating that shit that is poisoning themselves. And exercise. Time. Yeah, exercise is part of it. But if you had to pick one of the two, like I'd pick good food over exercise. Because even if you eat, exercise your face off, like I was when I was eating even significantly not great food, I was a sick as a, I was so sick. I felt sick. You know, it is what it is. Thanks. Great question. Couldn't agree more. So <laughs> I got a question for you. Yo, one, you're a mad smart dude. Thank you. I mean, I for sure. I don't know if that's true, but I just no, try, you, try to pursue this thing called life, make the homies, and live a fruitful life that can give value to others and help. So you have an eclectic variety of interests. So, like, where do you want to, like, take it? Like, we're, like end goal of me and you are on some boss talk and, like, you're 37, I'm 33, and we're, like, boss is 10 years. Where would you like to be positioned? Yeah. It, like being really honest, it's a tough question because some people don't like opening up about like where they envision themselves going, but yeah, no, I'm fine with that. I mean, I would like to be, I would like to have, first of all, there's a lot, I could talk about this question for a while. I know. Give me like one arrow right on the bullseye. Um, in terms of like an event that I want to have, I'm going to start something called, we can call it Lenhart Palooza. You can call it whatever you want. Fire. But I want to do an event every single year where I bring together the brightest, smartest, amazingest humans on the planet in a different cool area of the world, like Taiwan or, or Thailand, <laughs> Taiwan, <laughs> Thailand or Bali or, you know, North Dakota, wherever you're at. Swag. Do, do these retreats and just connect all of the best people. That was actually one of the reasons I started the podcast. 
to start throwing more Hail Marys out there to meet more amazing epic people because it makes me really happy when I connect people with people. Um, I'd like to start my, I'd like to run my own company, run my own organization, you know, completely be self-reliant, self-sustaining. I'd like to have a lot of, you know, nifty things like, you know, my dream aquarium, my dream pond. I'd like to live in another country uh, half the time of the year and would just like to be surrounded by amazing people. Like that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm a pretty simple human overall, but I would uh, also, I want to get into the VC world. I want to start a VC fund and invest in early stage startups. Damn. Could you cut the check for us? That'd be huge. <laughs> so you call it Leonard Palooza? Lenhart Palooza. Lenhart Palooza. Yeah. I like that dog. So my last name's Lenhart. Yeah. But then like Len Jones is in a variant of Lenhart. I love that, bro. Len Jones. Len Jones. Have you, like have you, have you thrown an event yet? Um, I'm actually planning the first one six months out from now. So we're trying to figure it out. Where? Uh, it's going to be in LA just because of the convenience factor. Could we come? I mean, dude, we've done a podcast, so it seems so. Dope. Absolutely. Well, we throw events in Boston, so we'll have to get you out there soon. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff, right? Like, what do you want to do? What do you want to do and be? Man, I, I want to know that, like, I want to connect with the most badass people on the planet. You know, like, Joe Rogan is the, the golden eye of podcasting. What's cooler than being able to just travel around and speak and have meaningful conversations with the most interesting people from around the world? I can't imagine a cooler life like what you guys are doing right now. It's fucking awesome. Well, question. Where is Rogan's studio? Do you somewhere know? in L.A. It's, somewhere it's in, in L.A., L- yeah. but do you know where? I was thinking about it. No, I mean, I'm definitely kind of going to drop in. creep. <laughs> It looks like he got a pretty sweet studio, though. Yeah, I mean, he's he's the man, dude. He's he's got a. Sick Did you life. see the Edward Snowden? Did you see any of it? He had Edward Snowden on his podcast. No, I didn't listen to that one. Wild. My favorite one's still Elon Musk. Fire. Yeah. Oh yeah, you would love that, dude. Imagine you get you get Elon on your show. Be one sweet. day, dude. One Why not? day. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that it's very important to have your values with a show like what you stand for. And I think that I curate that pretty well with our audience. I only want to have someone on the show that I know is like, at least at some degree, a pretty good person, you know, like how, do you, how would you gauge that though? You have conversation beforehand. Yeah. I always get on a 30 minute phone call similar to what we did uh, when you called me. Mm-hmm. Um, so shout out, uh, get we, on a 30 minute talk on the phone too. I try to become homies with people before the podcast. Yeah, me too. You know, I don't want to interview you. That's not my goal. I want to, I want to have a homie conversation. I want to figure it out. You know, I want to learn. I'm just, I'm super curious. You know, even if no one was to ever listen to the podcast, which was the case a long time ago, now we're popping. But if no one was to listen to it, just to get to sit down with that person and make friends with them, it's so sick. Just to talk with them. It's such an interesting form of media too. Like, dude, people like 10 years ago, when the podcast really started booming? Those, uh, those criminal podcasts. Yeah, just like, It's so interesting that media in like 10 years will probably only be podcasting, you know? I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, I just got back from the Vid Summit 2019, and it's basically all the largest YouTubers in the world. It's like Mr. Beast was there, Casey Neistat, um, Shailene Johnson spoke. She's incredible. Uh, If you don't know who Shailene Johnson is, she's basically who the mentors I look up to, they look up to her. She crushes it online and... She was talking about like the two most popping forums to get discovered today is Instagram TV. Um, and um, what's the other one? Not Instagram stories, but uh, Instagram TV is the number one for sure. But there's just in terms of what's next. I don't know. I just mean like there's no the great thing about podcasts is just completely transparent. I wonder if people will still like scripted media, though. I wonder if there's still like a demand for it. You know what I'm saying? Like CNN. Yeah, I mean, well, if you think about it, like all those YouTubers, like uh, Robbie, for example, you mm-hmm. know, they create these skits and people eat that shit up. Well, that's entertainment though. I didn't mean like getting information. Like, do you think there's still a necessity to have like broken up segments and, you know, like breaking news or do you think most media could come across in this form? Cutting it up into pieces yeah, and. It's easier to be consumed. But like breaking news, look what just happened. I don't know. I mean, we live in a world of headlines pop, right? It's whatever's clickbait. Whatever clickbait works is gonna work. I think I'm gonna call this one. It's a damn good day. 
Damn straight. There it is. Fair enough. <laughs> we had a great day in Santa Monica, man. Santa Monica is nice, man. I don't uh I, I don't have a car here. I actually bought a electric scooter. Whoa. But like the birds and all those stuffs, like they got expensive number one. You're dropping like five dollars if you're going on like three miles on that thing. That's like a lot of money uh, before you know it. They do it by distance? At that point you might as well just Uber. Um but yeah, it's based on per minute. So it's like a dollar to unlock, then twenty five cents per minute. And it only goes fifteen miles per hour, so it's super slow. They're still dope, but they're rigging the system. But it's slow. Mm-hmm. So I bought a scooter. It was like twelve hundred dollars by Fluid Free Ride. Shout outs, um, and it goes twenty five miles per hour, and it rips. And I get to and from my work all around Venice, and it's so much fun. It's definitely dangerous. We've been seeing them everywhere. Yeah, especially like if you're ripping and like you know someone just gets in front, like you're. I mean, it's dangerous, but it's so sick. Like. I highly recommend getting a scooter if, if, and you save a ton of money with cars, not having to have cars. How far are we from the boardwalk? From We're here? a mile from the boardwalk. Okay, cool. Yeah, you just walk. bang a right off 16th and you're there. Fire. Well, before we end, one, dude, I had a great time. Hell yeah, <laughs> dude. You guys are great, great guys. 23 years old, traveling the world, it's interviewing great. amazing people, networking, connecting, it's, Golden it's, Deer Productions, yes, GDP, sir. baby. Yes, sir. Additionally, I think in like one year, we should run another one. And I think you're going to be doing some even wilder shit. I think you're going to just like, you're a man inquisitive dude, bro. Just like, I feel good leaving this. This is awesome. Pre- I feel like I want to go like attack the world, man. Appreciate it. I mean, dude, like... It's a lot to do. There's people that are doing it. And like once you've. What you, sir? I, a big thing is like, f- how do you find the people though? You know what I'm saying? Do you think it's just inevitable? Like you find like minded people and have you found this? Is, we'll just how we'll end on it. Have you found it's been tough for you to find people with the same aspirations and the same positivity as you? I don't need to find people with positivity. Like I'm not like some people I talk to aren't like, like me. If it, everyone's it like me, it, it wouldn't though, be like a fun episode, right? Like I like to find people that are very different than me, but in general, my only prerequisite is I want to know that they're like a good person. I got to want to know that like that person's like, and I'm, so I'm wrong sometimes, right? Like, I get, you know, you just try, but, uh, yeah, it's like attracts like energy attracts energy. Good people attract good people. People will law of attractions real. You know, if you can believe things into existence, it happens, but you got to put the action behind the belief. A lot of people F that up. You can't just wish to be successful and then never happens. Think and grow rich. Fantastic. Shout out. Napoleon Napoleon Hill. Hill. Um, Jinx. (laughs) We just did an episode on sexual transmutation, actually. Yeah. Do you know what that is? No. It means like, yo, don't beat it. And like, if you, if there's a girl you really like channel all that energy into like your business or your drives and your ambitions and you'll be like 50 times more productive something like that but it's like and and you're not completely wrong there that's very accurate eddie mentor is a buddy of mine and he's like super intelligent and he's like all about this but it basically means semen retention is a way of saying it and basically you as a man can unlock apparently the ability to have unlimited orgasms. Ah! So I, I played the side of just being like, you know, the WTF side of that. But it's kind of fascinating what's going on with that. And they talk about it in chapter 11 in Napoleon Hill. Yeah, it's a big one. Boom. This is also Len Jones, a.k.a. Ian, however you say it. And that was my golden hour. <laughs>